Good morning. So, it's my privilege and joy to be back again here. And this morning, we'd like to bring you quickly back uh, to the book of James, the book of James, chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. Taming your temper is the topic of the sermon this morning. Anger is something that we feel every day, isn't it? Perhaps every hour, or for some people, every minute. That's not good. But anyway, but it is the feeling that comes to visit us every moment of our life. So that's why we're not surprised to see that the Bible has so many instructions concerning anger and how to manage your anger. We're not talking about reducing it. We're not talking about eliminating the anger. Eliminating the anger will make you a robot, will make you inhuman. I mean, you, you're going to become something else except a human being if you don't feel angry. Angry, I'm sorry. Thai accent came out. James chapter 1, verses 19. Oh, that. You get angry since you were born, right? The first minute, I mean, the first moment that you were born, you already crying. Get me something! Well, James chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, we just read a while ago, says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. That means pay attention. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. We can say that from these uh, verses, we can say that we can uh, receive some principle or maxim of living, the three, three essays of life skills. The first one is swift to hear. The second one, the second S is slow to speak. And when the Bible says you are too slow to speak, it doesn't mean you have to speak like this. It just means be careful when you speak. You can speak very fast, but be careful when you speak. And lastly, slow to be angry. Well, you see, Swift to hear, it's something concerning your speaking organ, your mouth, your lips. Slow to hear, I mean slow to speak, I'm sorry. Slow to hear, it's concerning your ear. Um, you see the problem with speaking too fast. Swift to hear is concerning your ear, the organ of receiving the, the sound. But slow to speak, is concerned the, the, the organ, the speaking organ. But now it's slow to be angry. It doesn't have anything to do with your outer organ, right? So the first one and the second one will create or will, you know, eventually make uh, another principle of how you should conduct your, your anger, how you should control your anger. So if to hear means, it doesn't mean you have to, to stick your notes everywhere. It doesn't mean you have to try to know the personal life of everybody. But to swift to hear means to pay attention with you when you have to hear something and think about it carefully. Uh, when we talk about slow to speak, means to think before you speak. Yeah. First, think before. Think when you hear. Think before you speak. So. When we use this equation consistently, we can we have conclusion like this. When you are slow to be angry, it means think carefully when you are angry. Why you are angry? To what you are at, with what you are angry at? With mm -hmm. Proverbs four uh, verses. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter fourteen, verse seventeen a and twenty nine says. A quick-tempered person does foolish things. And verse 29 says, 
Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. In other words, the Bible is saying that anger, unreasonable anger, if you will, reduces your intelligence. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter how talented you are. When you get angry unreasonably, you are a fool. You become stupid and your degree doesn't help and your education doesn't do any good. And it doesn't matter how wise you are, when you get angry unreasonably, you are just as good as an educated, an educated person that you possibly look uh, down on. Okay. So be careful when you are angry. Or perhaps don't get angry unreasonably. I have to emphasize on that unreasonably, unreasonable anger because in the end you will see that anger itself is not a, a bad thing, but it depends on how you use it. Right? Next, in Proverbs 15, verse 8 says, A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Not only controlling your anger makes you a wiser person, but makes you a peaceful person. Uh, somebody who would be called children of God, because Jesus said, whoever create peace, whoever bring peace to the society, God will call him children. Because that's one of the, the attributes of God. Peace, peaceful. Are you at peace? Are you uh, at peace with God? If not, perhaps you are angry with something. And after that, we will uh, come to the conclusion of what do we do when we are angry with something or someone. Proverbs 16.32 says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control, than one who takes a city. When we, when we read this verse, we have to ask a question, who is a warrior? How would you choose someone to go out in war? I'm sorry, I forgot to <laughs> uh, scroll down. All right, we are here now, Proverbs 16:32. Better a patient person than a warrior. How would you choose a warrior to go out for, to, to the war? What kind of requirements, what kind of uh, criteria w would you use in order to select somebody to become a warrior? Would you choose somebody weak? Would you choose somebody who doesn't have the fighting skill? Perhaps not unless you are really desperate. You would choose the strongest person in the city to go out for war. So what does the Bible say here? The Bible says that if you can control your anger, then you are stronger than the strongest person nearest to you. Strength doesn't require only muscle. Well, muscles doesn't define strength, it defines violence. The real strength doesn't need muscles. The real strength is the strength of the heart, not the strength of the body, because you can overcome some strong person without using strength. If you use the right wordings, if you use, use the right wisdom, and you, if you use the right strategy, which is actually the real strength in you, it's not about how strong physically you are, but how strong emotionally and spiritually you are. You are strong when you use less muscles. <laughs> I'm not talking about working out, okay? You have to work out and you have to go for exercise. Don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> Next, Proverbs 19.19 19 says, A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty Rescue them 
and you will have to do it again. I'm not sure if you have watched some sport news lately about the soccer news in Thailand. You know, I mean, when we watch sport news lately, I, in Thailand, I feel like we're watching news about lady society in Thailand, because it's all about how how Thai ladies accomplish internationally in the sport world. You talk about soccer, the the women's soccer of Thailand has gone to you know world champion cup, world championship, and Thai men's soccer team. Where are we? <laughs> we are still doing boxing on the soccer field, and we use anger everywhere. We if 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 the Thai men would just stop drinking and would just stop gambling. I'm sure we can do accomplish more than this. We can accomplish more than this. We're talking about volleyball. The women are ahead of us now, ahead of the Thai men. Soccer, even soccer, the sport that uses strength. <laughs> Every sport uses strength, but more strength. We're talking about taekwondo. We're talking about weightlifting. <laughs> Thai ladies are just superior. I mean, it's just wonderful. We, they get gold medal after gold medal after gold medal. But the Thai, sometimes, and especially the, in the soccer society, their anger just kill them. They don't control their anger, and what happened? They get, they receive their penalty again and again. I'm so tired of watching soccer with anger because it's, it's not beautiful. I mean, you, you can even just make a score of zero to zero and make it beautiful to me, I'm still satisfied more than just watching you making it five to five against three or whatever it is and display the anger without control. That is not fun. That is not beautiful. Next, Proverbs 22, 24 to 25 says, do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. The Bible says that not only that you will not be angry unreasonably, but try to stay away, try to stay away from those who are angry easily. Because why? Not only you might receive the result of their anger, but you will learn the way of their anger. That means you allow that person to influence you. Try, try to stay away doesn't mean you have to hate that person. Try to stay away doesn't mean you have to reject that person from being one of a member in the society. But to try to stay away means emotionally, socially, or another way I say, try not to let them influence you, but you instead influence them. How do we influence them then? Let's take a look at the next verse. By answering this question, was Jesus ever angry? Was Jesus ever angry? If, you, if you, your background is from some other religion, especially Buddhism, you will find that anger actually is condemned in Buddhism and it's called sin. To be angry is to be sinful immediately. As in, in Buddhism, my former background. Well, I, that's how to solve the problem at the, at the end of the rope. I mean, how to solve the problem, not from the, the cause, but try to resolve the effect of the problem, right? Because sometimes we cannot control anger, so let's not be angry at all. That will make you less human, less, I mean, you become more robotic instead of being come, becoming human. But the Bible doesn't say that. Let's see what, Jesus, what happened to Jesus. First, he was angry at least three times. For, uh, the first time he got angry, it was when he cleared the temple. Remember in John chapter 2, verses 13 to 17, we don't have enough time to do that, but if you would please go back to your private time and 
Look it up in John chapter 2. Jesus was angry when he, when he saw some influential people in the society took up some area in the temple which were supposed to use for prayer, especially for the Gentile uh, believers at that time. So he cleared the temple in order that people would be able to come and worship God. Jesus got angry at that time, but then he used his anger to allow people to worship God. Are you angry today? Are you angry with somebody, someone, some situation, something? Use it to help people worship God. Clear the temple. Use your anger to clear the temple. I don't mean only this place. Clear the temple of your life. Clear the temple of your workplace. Clear anything, anything that obstructs the, the way that people would come to worship God. Use your anger to clear that. Secondly, Jesus got angry. On one occasion, he went into a, uh, he went into a synagogue on a Sabbath day, and he was going to heal some, somebody with a, a you know, withered hand. And the people in the synagogue did not agree with him. So Jesus got angry. Well, how come you don't see the, you don't see the value, you don't value the people who are lacking the opportunity to, to be a part of society because of their physical shortage, because of their, their physical problem. So Jesus got angry. And Jesus, what did he do? He didn't go to the people in the synagogue or to the Pharisee or to those people who disagree with him. He didn't go to them and hit them and beat them up. No. He used his anger to heal the, the sick man, the man with a withered hand, with an arm. Somebody benefit from Jesus' anger physically. Are you angry with something today? Are you angry with someone today? Look around. Somebody is in need of your help. Use your anger to help somebody physically. Number three, Jesus was angry when in, another, in the other occasion when a lot of people came to see him. And perhaps the disciples were trying to, you know, set up a queue, you know, set up the order of seeing Jesus. And some people brought little children. Little children in this case perhaps means children who could not walk by themselves because in the Bible it says their parents or their adults that grown up, carried them to Jesus. And the disciple says, no, not, this place is not for children. This place is for those who understand what Jesus says or whatever reason the Bible didn't say. Then Jesus got angry because people, some people did not value, the, I mean, did, did not see the value of children. Jesus got angry and what did he do? He didn't beat anybody up. He didn't destroy anything. He uses his anger to bless the children. He said, bring the children to me. And Jesus carried them. He wasn't angry at that time, though. When he carried the children, he blessed them. He spent time with them. Are you angry today with someone, some people, with some things in your life, with some situation in your life? Look at what Jesus did. First time he got angry, and some people got blessed spiritually. The second time Jesus was angry, and people got blessed physically. And the third time Jesus got angry, and some little children got blessed spiritually. Are you angry today? Or you can be blessing by your anger if you use your anger correctly, biblically. Bless somebody. Physically, bless some people emotionally, bless some people spiritually. Because you see this, Jesus got angry, but he never became angry for his own benefits. That's the key. 
Are you angry today with some people, with some situations? Are you trying to resolve your anger by benefiting yourself, or are you trying to benefit others? That's a difference. Angry, I mean anger, is not wrong by itself. It's just like fire. Is is fire good or bad? Well, it depends how you use it. If you use it for cooking, oh, it's very good. I like it when it's used for cooking. But if you don't control it, the fire can burn your house down and can destroy everything you have. The same way as anger does. Anger is good if you control it. We're not talking about eliminating it. We're talking about controlling it. Don't eliminate your anger, but control it and use it because it empowers you. It moves you. It mobilizes you to do something good for the Lord. God is angry too, but He never uses His anger in the wrong way. Ephesians, lastly, Ephesians chapter 4, verses, verse 26 says, In your anger, the Bible knows that you, know, you can get angry. You cannot stop it. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Of course, it doesn't mean you have to go somewhere and stop the sun. Do not let the sun go down. No, no, no. The sun will go down anyway. But then do not let your anger linger too long. Two Ds, to think about it right now. Two Ds. The first D is decision. So do not go the wrong way. And the second D, when you get angry, duration. Do not, do not stay angry for a long time. Two Ds. That's a good way to remember it in Thai because D in Thai means goodness. <laughs> good. The two, two Ds that you have to think of, decision and duration. Am I angry? Decision. Don't, do, don't uh, go the wrong way. Am I angry? And how long have I been angry? Duration. Don't stay angry for a long time. Because even though, even though you have the right reason to be angry, but you soon will lose your strength to control it. So don't let it to stay too long. Otherwise, your reasonable anger can turn unreasonable. When you get angry, benefit somebody benefit something, especially worship God out of your anger, out of something that drives you worship God and bring blessing to others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us emotions, moods, and things that drives us. We know that we are human because we have drives, we have some things that mobilize us, motivate us. But we pray that we would use the motivations, we use our emotions in the right way, the way that we glorify you, the way that we will help others to, uh, pros to become prosper prosperous. We pray that we would bless the society through all kind of emotions that we have. We thank you for uh, the principles of your word that have taught us this morning. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.